Okay, what we're gonna do in this problem is we're gonna take a, a windmill blade and I just wanna look at a single blade. There's four blades here, I drew it because it's pretty. Uh, but I just wanna look at a single blade. We're gonna say this blade has some length out. And against this blade, there is a force by the wind. Now truly the, the wind would be inward, uh, but there's gonna be a force evenly distributed along this blade. So this is a force. Now this is the F, is the total force all the way along the entire blade. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna allow this single blade right here to rotate around through N revolutions. So it's gonna rotate all the way around N times. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to find the work done by the wind on the blade in N revolutions as a function of L and F. Now, here's the thing about this. Uh, we know work. Work is given by F dot D, which is F D cosine theta, or if we're feeling funky, we can say it is F of X DX. That is the integral of F of X DX. So somehow we're gonna to have to fit what's going on in this problem into this equation. We're looking for work to be done. And so what I wanna do in this problem is not look at the entire blade, but look at just a little bit of the blade, and here's why. If work is force times displacement, when you look at this, if I was to choose a point, say right here on the blade, this point right here, there's a force F acting tangentially up and to the left on this. And it's gonna drive that point on the blade all the way around through some total angular displacement D. Really, I should say tangential displacement D. I don't wanna get into dealing with omegas and S's and phases um, or angular quantities. We'll keep this in terms of tangential quantities. So this force is gonna cause this little piece of blade or even really a little, little slice of blade and yeah, you'll see where I'm going with this in a second. This infinitely small little slice of blade is gonna have an infinitely small force on it, and it's gonna cause this to rotate around a certain distance. Now the reason I wanna look at just this teeny tiny little slice of blade is because if I move in a little ways, let's look at a point on this blade right here. Yes, there's gonna be the same force on that teeny tiny little slice of blade, but it's not gonna move as far, so it's gonna have a different tangential distance. And so, the distance traveled by each point along this blade is a function of its radius. And so we have to be careful with that. Right, so we're gonna say this little slice that we care about right now is at some radius r. And we're gonna say this teeny tiny little slice is infinitely thin, it's all at one radius. So it's gonna have a thickness dr. And I wanna look at the force on just that little slice and the work done on just that little slice. It's different from the work done on this slice farther in. But if we can come up with a function for the work done on a slice as a function of its radius, I bet you that'd be super useful, right? So we're gonna look at the work done on just this little bit right here. So there's a teeny tiny little force on this. Now, if we wanna figure out the magnitude of force on this little slice, we gotta back up a little ways to what we were given. We've got this force F distributed along this entire blade that has some length L. So what that means is the force per unit length is F over L. Uh, this is a little bit similar to a concept we've talked about in the past that is mass per unit length, but just in case you didn't see that video, uh, really what we're talking about here is this force F is distributed over this entire length L. So if I want to look at some, some unit length, like say one meter of length of this, this blade, the force on that, that unit length of a blade is going to be the total force divided by the total length. So this is really important here. And here's why. The force on a slice of blade
is going to be the force per unit length. F over L, multiplied by the length of the blade, dr. Now this is not the total force, this is just a teeny tiny little bit of the total force. I could even go so far as to call this df. Now, just, just for fun, let's say you've got some free time, maybe you're home, you're, you're quarantined, or you're on a snow day, not taking a test or anything like that, you got nothing to do, what are we gonna do? All right, we're gonna go through, let's say you integrated this. You know what you're gonna come up with? If you looked along this entire blade from a radius of zero to a radius of L, this works out to be F. Integrate this thing, you're gonna find the total force is F. I won't take the time to do that. I've made enough of a mistake. We've got the force on a slice. It's F over L dr. So, what do we do with this? Well, let's look at the work done on this teeny tiny little slice. Now this isn't going to be a whole bunch of work, this is just going to be a teeny tiny little bit of work. We, we could even go so far as to call it DW. It's an infinitely small chunk of the total work. Well, that's going to be the force on this tiny little slice, that is F over L dr, multiplied by the total tangential distance which this little slice right here is going to travel. Well, the total tangential distance is going to be the circumference, that is 2 pi r, multiplied by the number of revolutions, that is n, n, all the way down, it looked like an r, terrible me. Uh, so, if we can go through and clean this out, just because this hurts my brain to look at it this way. DW is, let's put all the constants up here, F times N times 2 pi over L R D R. I know the FN and then the 2 pi, they're out of order, it hurts me, I can't, I can't leave it like this, DW, 2 pi F N over L R D R. All right, I'm happy. If my wife saw this, she's a calculus teacher, she would be happy. We're all happy now, okay? Happy wife, happy life, right? So not this teeny tiny little bit of work that's gonna be done by this teeny tiny little slice of, of rotor blade in going around n number of times. That's cool, but it's a tiny little bit of work. I want a lot of work, all right? In fact, I want all the work. All, right? all the work along the entire blade, from a radius of zero to a radius of L. So, hmm, how, how could we add up a whole bunch of infinitely small quantities if only such a, a method existed? Ah, there is. We could say the total work was the infinite sum of all of the little works, that'd be cool. Let's do that. So the total work is going to be the infinite sum of two pi f n over l r dr. Now, before I integrate this or, or do anything with that, let's, let's get these constants out of here, just so we can see how simple this really is. The work is going to be 2 pi f n over l uh, integral r dr. Now, the question comes up, what R's do we care about? Do we care about an R from zero out to infinity? Do we care about an R from some position of one meter here out to some position out here? No, I care about from zero to L. If I was to move this rotor blade outward, that would change our limits of integration. But here I'm going from zero to L in this problem. That's specific to the problem. If I was to change the geometry of this, maybe I had this rotor blade out on the end of some cute little stick, uh, that, that would change things around. But that's, that's not for now. So realize what's going on here. We're simply taking the integral of R. That's gonna leave us with one half R squared evaluated from zero to L. So it'll work. When we clean this up, because I got a two, has a little cancel party with the one half right here. I'm gonna have pi fn over l times l squared minus zero squared. 
Sorry, zero squared, you don't matter. And we get a little bit of a cancel party going here. And we got the total work done is pi times F N L. I don't know why I wrote it like I was waiting for something to be on the bottom of this fraction, because there's nothing down here. We'll clean it up. Ah, that feels better. See, this just feels awkward. This feels nice. There we go. So what we get here is the total work done by the entire blade in rotating around through n revolutions. And that, boys and girls, is what we call the windmill blade problem. And that's all for now.